President Trump has been teasing a big announcement for weeks, and today we could learn whether he plans to launch a 2024 presidential run. It comes despite another one of his backed candidates, Republican Carrie Lake, losing her election for Arizona governor. She lost? Yeah. Really? And you know who I feel bad for? Yeah, I know. I mean, we have Mike Barnacle and Eugene yeah. Robinson. They're, they're still with us. Here. But, you know, um, she was really mean to him. She was. She called him a bastard. She called him a bastard. She was always pointing her fingers like you. Yeah, she was at, getting like, right in his face. Japan. I'm going to teach you how to be a Yeah. And all this. I felt really bad for him. And yeah. I, but, you know. He weathered the storm. He did. He he walked on. He asked the, the questions. Rain. He he, had, he, he kept, kept at it. But she was so mean to him. Yeah, I felt bad for him. I did too. Vaughn. Vaughn, are you okay, Vaughn? This morning, are you doing okay, Vaughn? Because she was awfully <sighs> mean to you. Called you a bastard. <laughs> said that like you. I think you were bad, or maybe she said we were bad for or American evil. democracy. Evil. I don't know. She's it was always in your face. It had to be a. How are you doing this morning? You feeling okay, Vaughn? I, th I think you guys and me were in the same camp. How about that? Uh, <laughs> I think it made sense also to be here today with this announcement, if we may. Could I say something about Carrie Lake, you guys? Would that be okay? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. we we love Go that. for it. Okay. Uh, look, I covered Carrie Lake for the better part of the last year and a half here. And I think it was perhaps fitting to be here across from Mar-a-Lago today. I finally flew yesterday from Arizona here. And essentially, though, I felt like it was covering Donald Trump's campaign of 2024, but in Arizona over the last year. She predicated her campaign on trying to sell the big lie and trying to sell the conspiracy theories. When she wonders how she lost this race, look at it. This is the third election cycle in a row in which Arizonans rejected Trump. In the final week of her campaign, who did she campaign alongside? She campaigned alongside Steve Bannon. She campaigned alongside one of the chief promoters of Pizzagate. She campaigned alongside an individual who promoted the notion of the war on white people. She campaigned alongside State Senator Wendy Rogers, who just earlier this year was here in Florida speaking at a white nationalist conference, somebody who frequently spews anti-Semitism. This is an individual who just last week called her Democratic opponent a pervert. This is an individual who suggested there should be perp walks for elections officials, criminal charges against individuals who oversaw COVID response in 2020 in Arizona. This is an individual who's celebrating putting a dagger into the quote, the McCain machine. She asserted that Cindy McCain wants to end America. She called Mike Lindell one of the great patriots of our time. She said Dinesh D'Souza is one of the greatest patriots in America. She suggested Paul Gosar was the kind of lawmaker our founding fathers envisioned. She called the media the right hand of the devil, the scourge of the earth. If that doesn't sound like Donald Trump, I don't know what does. And ultimately, the big question was, was she going to be able to make that sell here? And the answer is no, according to Arizona voters. And when you look at that slate of election deniers, from Tudor Dixon to Tim Michaels uh, to uh, Jim Marchant in Nevada to Mark Fincham, she was the latest one to fall, essentially making it a clean sweep of those not only right. election denier gubernatorial candidates and secretary of state candidates. And now Donald right. Trump is going to go and try to run on the very message that all these folks lost. Done. So Vaughn, uh, let, let, why don't you tell tell us because you were out there? Um, of course, yes, she did law, lose. It was a close race, but talk about how close uh, America came to having a governor in a swing state. Yeah. That by all accounts, everybody was out there saying that she was actually an articulate version of Donald Trump. That she was actually smoother, uh, more savvy. Uh, she knew how to work rooms. She she campaigned all over the place. A lot of Democrats that came back came back and were were very scared uh, of of this woman in a way they had not been scared of of any political candidate I've seen uh, uh, since Donald Trump's emergence in 2015. I mean they they thought she was going to win and that she was going to be the heir apparent to Donald Trump. And she was all those things. I mean, this is giving away my age here, but I grew up watching Carrie Lake on the local news on Fox 10 in Phoenix. She was the face of Phoenix television in the evenings there. And that was the belief that if there was somebody who uh, was a little bit more refined, if you may, was able to present, you know, the Donald Trump message a, a, a little bit more cleanly, it was Carrie Lake here. And the Democratic opponent she was facing, Katie Hobbs, look, she never went toe to toe with 
Carrie Lake on the debate stage. She was somebody who a, a great many folks were hesitant to support. By all accounts, she was a straightforward Democrat over her years in the state legislature. legislature. And yet, what happened with Arizona voters? They were paying attention. And guess what? It was a, a local leader. Kathy Petsis is her name. She was a local legislative district chairwoman. You know, one of those very nitty gritty activist types there who came from the more of the McCain era of Arizona Republican Party. And it was three days after Carrie Lake's primary victory in which the Carrie Lake campaign account tweeted at her that she was the type of demographic that they did not need. She made it very clear that it was the McCain Republicans that they did not need. And when you're looking at a 20,000 vote difference here, uh, the reality is, is that's exactly who Carrie Lake needed. And now the question is, where does she go from here? Where does the Arizona Republican Party, where does Kelly Ward, where do the likes of Mark Fincham go from here? Because Carrie Lake tweeted out last night that Arizonans know BS, uh, but clearly Arizona voters called her out or on her own. She actually said four days before Election Day, if there are any McCain Republicans in the room, get the hell out, calling John McCain a loser in the state of Arizona. Probably not a great decision from a campaign. Let me ask you about why you're there in Mar-a-Lago. That announcement expected tonight that Donald Trump will announce his candidacy again to be president of the United States. What do we expect to see tonight? Right. Both things, I think, can be true at the same time. One, so many of these Trump-endorsed candidates, guys, right, they lost. However, at the same time, when you're looking at the Republican Party that is going to be serving in this next Congress, but also in governor seats around the country, you no longer have the likes of Larry Hogan, Asa Hutchinson, Doug Ducey, Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, Tom Rice. Suddenly, you are looking at a Republican Party that is much more in the mold of Donald Trump. That is the backdrop to which he sees himself announcing his 2024 presidential run tonight. He has got a smaller campaign operation that will be behind him. You noted that super PAC with nearly $100 million of money behind him. He is confident that he will be able to undercut the candidacies of Ron DeSantis. You've already seen him go on the tack against Glenn Youngkin. And when you are looking at who else would be able to uh, haul in the resources necessary to challenge him, uh, he's got a point to be made. But the question is, is this going to be a campaign that is focused on the grievances? Because if you look at his true social account from the last 24 hours, he's posted 64 different memes heavily focused on 2020, QAnon themes, the idea that he is going to arise here and take control back. The question is, voters around the country here in these midterms already rejected the premise of what he expected to be his 2024 campaign. I was at rallies across the country with him, and you saw the Republican candidates around the country go and willingly stand on the stage with him. And now the question is here tonight, how does he make this forward looking? Is he able to do so? And is he able to cut a contrast here that could somehow resonate with Republican voters who are frankly now perhaps a little bit more skeptical about his own political influence here. NBC's Vaughn Hilliard, thank you so much for your reporting. We really appreciate it. We'll talk to you again soon.